Hi guys, this is Ari from TechShare. I did not record video since long uh, because I was quite busy doing some investigation, some work. Sort of really, really busy I have been uh, throughout this um, last couple of months. So that's, that's why I could not um, post uh, those different videos, but I'll be back very soon. So today I'm, I'm gonna record a quick video about Udo and how can you set up your Udo environment in your local machine sort of development environment I'm talking about now um, what is Udo um, this is a very good question because I'm, I'm very very new to Udo platform um, I came to this platform because of some sort of investigation I'm at this moment doing so I was thinking okay let's post a video quickly um, so that you guys if you also face the same sort of uh, challenges that I was also facing um, that will definitely help you guys to uh, to um, resolve the problem. So now, first and foremost, what is Udo? Udo is very basically a suite of business management software tools, basically an ERP system. And yeah, Udo is called open source uh, ERP system. So basically, the source code is open. So if you go here in the GitHub then you will see this project is basically here hosted uh, in the GitHub. So you can basically download the, the different version of Udo and you can run it here in your local machine. So at this moment, I have a um, um, Docker setup. So Docker, I set up the Udo and if I now go here, then you'll also see that one. So this is on 2069. Yeah, so let me quickly show you guys the Udo UI and how does it look like if you log in. And then probably I'll go through the, the local setup part from there. So now let me, uh, let me, uh, okay, so what is the password? Let me quickly log in here and see if I could log in here or not. Uh, so, yep. I guess it is working. Um, if not, maybe I'll open the other. Yeah, it is working fine. Let me save this one here. And then if you go to the app section here, then you will see basically Udo is basically a combination of these kind of applications. So you can basically install any of this application accordingly. You can use that to your project management, to your CRM inventory. I mean, in a, in a typical ERP system, you have to do, you have to deal with a lot of different applications, different systems, and Udo is capable of handling all of all of those different um, requirements, or you can say, to solve all those different complexity normally enterprise company uh, going through uh, to manage different things. So Udo is, is such a beautiful, such a powerful um, web enterprise application, I would say. And it is very, very, uh, you know, highly scalable as well as it is highly customizable. Well, it's scalable. Definitely it is scalable. I am not 100% sure about that, but it is highly custom customizable. This is for sure. So now you can install any of these and you can straight away jump into the development, jump into the sort of, uh, you know, using, jump into using this application to your enterprise, um, enterprise problem domain. Now you can see I already have installed this CRM. This is called install. A similar way you can create your own module here very easily, so that you can you know uh, provide some solutions, some custom solutions based on based on your different domains that you have already here. So maybe I'll create some more videos on this. But today what I'm going to do is so you can see here this is already hosted in my Docker. So now what will happen if I want to modify something, some component or if I want to implement my own module here like this app, then that would be challenging because this is totally sort of in the Docker. What if I could download the entire GitHub here in my local machine? And what if I could set up that uh, sort of you know environment the same that you can see here in my local machine by Visual Studio Code or PyCharm, whatever the editor you're gonna use. If you could do that, then that would be really helpful because you know you can then create your um, custom thing very easily because the whole application is running basically uh, to your machine under a project, right? So that is really, really helpful. So that, that what I, I did. So what you need to do basically to clone this uh, repository, github.com udo slash udo and then download it or clone it, whatever you like. And then 
I have this project here. This one is already downloaded. Now let me open my um, my project here. So what I did basically, uh, I'm going to uh, demo that one to you guys today. So what I did is the Udo Master. I downloaded everything here from that repository that I showed you. Now in order to run it, uh, because I already told you that this is basically um, well. Uh, um, I might not have told you. So this is written in Python language. So you need to know basically how can you run Python, you need to install Python, this kind of thing. So installing is very, very easy. You just need to install it. You just need to grab it, the Python version, maybe 3.6 or even more. And then that's all. And then what you need to do after downloading this repository, you need to configure your editor so that it can run using the Python, right? So for that, um, I'll show you that one but the first thing is you know after downloading you need to go to this Debian directory and you need to grab this uh, udu.config file which is very important this one because here you need to provide all the necessary information so that udu can configure the database and run it so now you need to copy this udu.config file that I already did and you need to paste it in the root directory here in the udu master so here you can see I have already configured this udu dot config here now you see a lot of different settings here honestly i did not know about all of this thing what i did basically i'll show you that one so initially when i copy pasted then i only had a couple of settings like your host name which is localhost so uh, yeah the another thing to know is you know if you want to work with udu then you need to install the postgres database because that is where uh, your data table everything will be stored by udu so you need to immediately install uh, Postgres database and you need to grab the connection string from that Postgres database. For me, it is localhost and my Postgres database is using local using 45433 port. So by default, the port is 5432, but I intentionally send it to 5433 in my local because I also have Docker instance of my Postgres. So I really don't want to conflict in some ways this port. So that's why I thought it's safe to use a different port than the port that I'm using in my Docker. So anyway, now then you also need to create some DB user and then some password, blah, blah, blah. And then after, so you don't need to worry about anything. So what you need to provide is, let me open the other file here. So in the in the Udo config file, you have the DB host, which would be localhost, port would be 54332 or 33 db user db password right that's all that's all you need to provide and then this is the important thing you need to provide the add-ons path as well so my, by default the add-on path is that path so you can right click copy basically copy path reference and you can basically take this path from the content root or absolute path is fine so you can copy that and you can paste it here then then that's all then the next thing you need to do is you need to once your Udo configuration is done, then the next thing you need to do is to uh, configure your project so that it it runs through the Python. For that, you need to do you need to go to the run and edit configuration. In the edit configuration, first you need to select the script path. The script path would be inside your Udo master. Let me go here. Inside your Udo master, Udo master is your directory where. Uh, for me, I saved the repository here, sorry, so source control here. So in the Udo master, there is a Udo bin. So you need to select that one here. Okay. And the parameter is very important. You need to use if you are using Windows. And by the way, I am explicitly, uh, you know, giving you this information for Windows, not Linux or a Mac platform, because in the parameter, you need to use the capital, uh, small lowercase c, not a capital C. So minus C udu.config you need to provide this one very important and then in the environment variable this is you will get automatically here but here this is very important python interpreter because uh, since we are using here uh, udu 14 so you need to select python 3.6 version that i selected here as well so you just need to select it and that's all basically once you select this you can select okay and the next thing is you need to run it so you see here, this Udo local is already configured that we did here basically minutes ago. This 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 one is called Udo local, right? So now if you just simply run it, then it, it should run. Now what I was facing also, that's why I thought, okay, let's create a video. Um, 
I did struggle a lot and basically I could not run this project uh, because I was getting a lot of different issues because the database was not initialized. So it always mentioned that, hey, your database is not initialized, something like this. And also anytime if you see it says that the module is not installed or this module is not found, this kind of message when you run it. So let me run it first and then I'll show you. So this is already running fine. So that's why I would not have got any such thing. But if any point you see something like the module is not found, something like this. So what you need to do is it will also mention the module name. You need to copy the module name and you need to jump into the file, then settings. And then here in the package, you need to click this plus button and you need to paste the module name here. Then you will see, uh, you will see, you will see that module name here popping out popping up and you need to select that one and you need to install that particular module. So in that way, you might need to install 10 or 15 different modules at the very beginning when you are going to run the project. But after that, it should really, really work fine. Now, now this is working fine. You can see here. So let me go here and you'll see uh, it is running basically in my local 8091 port. See if I go here, my local host. Um, and the port would be 8091. Then we would have seen uh, it is working fine. And then if there is another option, you can manage the databases as well. So right now I'm using Udo 14 DB. You can create new database and you can see all the apps and everything as a sort of very fresh copy. Every module that you installed before will not be uh, appearing there because there is a fresh database. If you create a new database, maybe, maybe for, a, for a new company or whatever. But um, if you go here, this database, if you try to log in here, then you will see the same application that I am I was showing there. But this time, this is, you can see here, this is all loading. So let me, let me quickly refresh and show you guys how easy it is, how nice it is. So see here, this is all loading. Basically, the project is running from my local um, uh, Python uh, sort of editor. So this application is running in my local. So you can do any modification you need. You need if, if you need to create a new module, for example, the, what would be the next step? I'll show you the next video, but then you basically need to create an add-on here. So you can see here all the different modules already installed. You can create your custom modules and there are some extensions. Um, there are some ways that you can actually quickly, you know, create a module by applying those commands or, commands or some tools. I'll show you that one, but that's the thing. And the another thing is if you if you ever face any issue while running at the very first time that some database initialization fails, then what you need to do is you need to go in the run uh, edit configuration here and then you need to pro provide first time commands. What is the command I have already written here because it is very hard to memorize. So you just need to uh, do this here. So in the configuration, let me copy from here and show you guys. Okay. So now what you need to do is, you also need to pass some additional parameter at the very beginning. So it, it basically means that, hey, I am going to initialize my database. So since the database you just created uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Postgres um, editor, so the database is not the database is, is not yet initialized. If you sort of get this kind of message, then you need to provide this extra additional sort of command. So it says that hey, I need to initialize my database, and the database name is Udo fourteen. In that case, what you can do is basically you can create a database straight away in the in the Postgres at a very empty database, and then you can actually do this thing. So that you know that way, what will happen is when you run at the very beginning Udo, then Udo will basically grab this command and it will add all the necessary data that it needs to populate in the database so that you can basically go and, you know, uh, straight away login. So I'm not going to save that one because that is basically the very on off settings that I found is very helpful. All right, guys, that's all for today. Um, if there is any problem you face or anything, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll, since I'm also very new, but I'll try to help you guys. And uh, this for today. Next, maybe I'll, I'll show you guys how can you set up a new add-ons or module, your custom module in 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 um, in uh, Udo. There are another important or nice thing that I have some sort of intention to to explore, which is basically GraphQL. 
So how can you install the GraphQL platform in Udo so that you can basically expose the Udo model to the outer world? So since Udo is a open source platform, obviously, uh, you might uh, have other application which you know might also need to access different data. So you can definitely do that do that by XML um, RPC that Udo out of the box, box provides, right? You can also use JSON RPC as well, but GraphQL is very robust and very nice because it, it it is it is the it is the thing that people are using and nowadays. So I'll also show you that one in the next video. Till then, bye bye. Have a good day.